Hey guys, welcome to HPC Education and today we'll be looking at the parallel region. Before we get into it, let's look at the world's most famous example, the Hello World example. I'm sure you would have come across this if you ever tried learning any programming language. It's kind of like a ritual to start off with this simple example. Anyway, let's begin. All we're trying to do is print Hello World here. Here's the code. Print F with Hello World within parentheses. We're going to use the GCC compiler to compile and dot slash A dot out to run it. Here's the output. Pretty simple, right? What we just executed was a simple serial program. Now let's try to parallelize it. Here's the code. All we had to do is include the OpenMP header files by including omp.h and add the parallel construct. By adding hashtag pragma omp parallel, we are basically specifying a block of code to run in parallel. Let's look at the output. This time, while compiling the code, make sure you type hyphen f openmp before the file name to let the compiler know that we are using openmp here. Hello world is printed twice. Why does this happen? When you use hashtag pragma omp parallel, you are essentially specifying a parallel region, which is the part of the code that has to be run by multiple threads. Here are two threads that are created by default and they are running to print the same printf statement and that's why we see two hello world statements in the output. So what exactly is the parallel region? The parallel region refers to the code enclosed between the brackets following the parallel construct. The syntax of the parallel construct is hashtag pragma omp parallel followed by a pair of brackets. All code between these brackets is run by multiple threads running in parallel. All code before and after the parallel region is serially run by a single master thread. Here, we see a master thread in red executing code serially. When the master thread encounters a parallel construct, it is going to split into a team of threads to execute the code inside the brackets in parallel. The master thread is still going to be the first thread in this team of threads. Once all the statements are executed, the thread joins back to form a single master thread, which exits the parallel construct and goes back to serially executing code. We saw that hello world was printed twice, indicating that two threads were created. Now what if we want to create more threads to run more tasks in parallel? It's simple. Look at this code. Here, we are specifying the number of threads to create by using omp set num threads. We are telling the compiler to create four threads. As you would expect, the output shows hello world printed four times. Running the same statement multiple times by different threads doesn't seem that useful. Multi-threading only becomes super useful when different threads are running different tasks simultaneously. We can easily assign work to different threads using thread ID. Now what is thread ID? Every thread which is created is assigned an ID, ranging from 0 to the number of threads created. Thread 0 is reserved for the master thread and the other threads have IDs 1, two and three. Now let's try one last hello world program to see our thread IDs in action. Here we have created a variable ID that stores the thread ID, which can be obtained by running OMP get thread num. We'll now print the IDs along with hello world to see when each thread runs. Here's the output. As you can see, there is no order in the execution of threads. This is because the threads, though they are running at the same time, only one output can be printed at a time. The compiler prints whichever output it receives first. Let's run this again. Now, we see a completely different order. 
This tells us that we have no control over the order of the execution of threads, but within each thread, the statements are executed sequentially. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.